Today, I want to talk about a similar concept that often gets confused with interfaces, and that is the concept of an abstract base class. And we're going to talk about this thing called an abstract base class, and I'm going to start off by using our familiar dog code. So here is some dog code that we had written all the way back in the first quarter. Just as a reminder, we have this dog class, that's the parent class, and then we had created all these other classes that inherited from the dog class. I'll just take a look at that Beagle class for a second to remind you. You can see that the Beagle, like the other dog breeds, all extend the dog class. They inherit from the dog. We said that when we have an inheritance relationship in Java, that is an is a relationship. We would say that the poodle is a dog, the beagle is a dog, the senji is a dog, and chihuahua is a dog. And we said that by extending a class, we could get access to all of its features, but then override the ones that we don't like so we could have customized features for our new class. So the beagle here, for example, can do everything that a dog can do, but when it comes time to speak, it's got its own custom speak method. So let's have a look at the dog code one more time. And let's ask ourselves, what would we do if we did not want the user to be able to create classes, sorry, to create objects of this class? Let's say that we said to ourselves that the dog, it's just too abstract a concept. What we want to do is limit them to only using the dog class with its inheritance relationship. In other words, we want to allow them to make these classes because these are individual breeds of dogs, but we don't want them to make a dog that doesn't have a breed. We want them to be able to only use this class for the purposes of inheritance, but not to be able to do something like this, where I'm actually creating a dog. We want to say that we don't want to allow this to happen, but we still want to allow poodles, beagles, basenjis, and chihuahuas to be made. One way we can do that is in the dog class header, we can put the keyword abstract. And what this does is it tells the user and the compiler that we cannot create objects of this class. So now if I head on over to the dog tester, you can see that the compiler will no longer allow me to make a dog using the new keyword because dog is now an abstract concept. Now you might think that it's kind of an artificial thing to do to limit a class's ability to be made into an object, but this has a lot of advantages and I'm gonna go over some of those now. Let's come back over here to the dog code and let's look over here now at this speak method that we had written before. One thing I can do now, if a dog happens to be an abstract concept, is that I don't have to write all the methods anymore. So for example, I can go like this and stub out the speak method. Notice that I am stubbing out the speak method in a similar way to how I stubbed out the methods in my interface. So now you can see that the speak method, in addition to the dog being abstract. Now the speak method and any other methods I choose can also be made abstract. Now if we come over here, we see that the beagle has its own speak method. And so now if I compile this, you can see that the beagle is going to compile. However, if I come over here now to the poodle class, and you can see now that the poodle, which had previously compiled, is now no longer compiling. Why is the poodle no longer compiling? We have not overridden the speak method, and now we are required to overwrite it. You see that? I am forcing any class that is concrete that inherits from me, I'm forcing it to write this speak method. I'm saying, you can use my facilities, you can inherit my features, but there are some parts that are unfinished, and you have to finish those. So now we would have to go back in, we would have to go back in here into the poodle code and we would have to override the speak method. And now you see that the error will go away. 
So one of the big advantages of having an abstract base class like this one is that we can write some methods ahead of time, like this get name method, and everyone that inherits from us can get access to it. And other methods, like this speak method, we can leave unfinished and force the class that is inheriting from us to build the method. I like to think of abstract base classes as an unfinished painting. You're letting someone take over and finish the painting. Parts of it you do, parts of it they do. I have to give you some tricky questions that are of the AP level that were asked on previous AP exams back when the abstract base class used to be part of the curriculum for this course. It's no longer part of the curriculum. About two or three years before COVID, College Board did a simplification of this course and abstract based classes is one of the things that got pushed out of the curriculum. And you can see now I've got a perfectly valid abstract based class here. In the multiple choice, they ask a question. If I have a class B, we don't know what type of class it is, but B extends A. Is class B required to implement this foo method? Yes or no? It is not. I got this wrong when I tried this on the test for practice, and now I would like you to discuss with your partner, how can I have a new class here called B, which is going to extend A and yet not be required to implement the foo method? I said that we don't know what kind of class B is. That's a huge clue. Can anyone guess what kind of class B might be that would not require it to implement foo method? Okay. Look what happens now if B is also an abstract class. You'll notice that A and B both compile now, even though A has an abstract method, B extends A, but look, B is not required to implement foo. How did I describe an abstract class? What did I say it was like? Like an unfinished oil painting. That's what I said, it was unfinished. So here, B is extending A. A has an abstract method. B is not required to provide that abstract method because B is unfinished. Who has to provide the foo method? The class that isn't abstract that extends B. Now, if I create a new class called C, and I put this down here, and I say C extends B, you can see it's already complaining that now we don't have a foo method. Now you can see that foo was declared here. B could have implemented foo, but chose to pass the buck and didn't implement it. But said, I'm abstract. I don't have to do anything I don't want to do. And now the C class, which extends B and by implication also extends A, yes, it needs to implement the foo method. So now I'm going to put the foo method in here. And now you can see that everyone is happy and all three classes compile. Now I have one last question for you today, and this will sort of end our discussion of abstract base classes. If I take this method out of here, is there somewhere else I could implement that foo method that would allow this class sequence hierarchy to compile? Mr. Brian, where else can I put foo, sir? I can also put it in B. Now you can see that this sequence will also compile. So therefore, when you have an abstract base class in the middle, there is some flexibility. It can implement some stuff that it needs to implement, or it can just pass the buck further down to some other comp concrete class that will then be required to implement all the missing features in the hierarchy of the abstract classes. So you can see that having things that are abstract give you flexibility. You can build parts of the features of a class and then require classes, you can require the classes that inherit from you to do the rest. In the abstract base class A, all you're saying is that somewhere down the line, when someone inherits from A, they have to provide this method. It doesn't have to be the class that immediately inherits from them, because that class might itself be abstract, but somewhere before you get to a concrete class, somewhere before you try to com compile a concrete class, someone has to implement this foo method. That is my little description. Uh, that's my little lesson for you today on abstract base classes.